Today, my driver, Duwada, tells me I will see hippos and crocodiles. So we drive from Simba Safari Camp to the small town of Moea on the northeast shore of Lake Edward to the main gate, headquarters, and visitor center for Queen Elizabeth National Park. I am to get on a sightseeing boat, which is called a tripper boat, and sail from Lake Edward to Lake George via the Kazinga Channel. Before I can go boating, I have to stop at the visitor's center, register, and pay for the trip. Duwada parks the truck and I get out and walk into Africa's meanest bush. I call it the Au bush because its thorns are long and thick. After regaining my composure to being a human pincushion, I turn around and run smack dab into a troop of mongooses, also known as meerkats. The mongooses live in a troop of 20 to 30, consisting of an alpha male and female, usually together with their siblings and offsprings. One of the braver males approaches me, so I kneel down to get a better camera angle when Duwada says, don't move or I'll bite you. To protect the foraging troops from predators, one mongoose serves as a sentinel and climbs to a vantage point and watches for danger. If the sentinel detects a predator, it gives a loud alarm to warn the troop and indicate whether the threat comes from the air or from the ground. The mongoose emits a high-pitched noise called giggling when it mates. Giggling is also heard during courtships. I get to the visitor center and read the plaque, then move to the observation deck overlooking Lake Edwards. Lake Edward is the smallest of the African Great Lakes. The lake was named in 1888 by explorer Henry Morton Stanley in honor of Prince Albert Edward, the Prince of Wales. Lake Edward lies on the border between Congo's Virunga National Park and Uganda's Queen Elizabeth National Park and does not have an extensive human habitation on its shores. The village weaver builds a large coarse nest woven of grass and leaf strips with a downward facing entrance which is suspended from a branch in a tree. The village weaver is a colonial breeder, meaning that one tree will host an entire colony's nests. This is a hammer cop, and its behavior is unlike any other birds. One unusual feature is up to 10 birds join in ceremonies in which they run circles around each other, all calling loudly, raising their crests and fluttering their wings. These birds are compulsive nest builders, constructing three to five nests per year, whether they are breeding or not, and decorate the outside with any bright colored objects they can find. When possible, they build the nest in the fork of a tree, often overlooking the water. How do you say good travels in Swahili? Safari Jema. I arrive at the Lake Edward boat dock at the neck of the Kazinga Channel, not sure of what to expect. I'm early and the other tourists haven't yet arrived when I hear the unmistakable call of the Spurwing Lapwing. Did he do it? Did he do it? The Kazinga Channel is a wide 32 long natural channel that connects Lake Edward and Lake George and a dominant feature of Queen Elizabeth National Park. The pink-backed pelican is smaller and duller than the great white pelican with a wingspan of 8 feet and an average weight of 12 pounds. Unfortunately, the pinkback is on the IUCN's red list of threatened species. We continue sailing along the Kazinga Channel, eagerly searching the shoreline for Nile crocodiles. Nile crocodiles have temperature-dependent sex determination, which means the sex of their hatchlings is determined not by genetics, but by the average temperature during the middle third of their incubation period. If the temperature inside the nest is below 89.1 or above 94.1 Fahrenheit, the offspring will be female. Males can only be born if the temperature is within that 5 degree range. Further along, we come across a herd of hippos and the boat gets quiet. Despite their physical resemblance to a pig, 
Their closest living relatives are cestaceans, meaning whales and porpoises. Hippos are ill-tempered animals and hostile towards Nile crocodiles, which often live in the same pools and rivers. This is especially so when hippo calves are around. Nile crocodiles, lions, and spotted hyenas prey on young hippos. Hippos are very aggressive towards humans and are often considered one of the most dangerous large animals in Africa. Lake George is a small lake with an average depth of only 2.4 meters and is fed by streams from the Roranzori Mountains. Its outflow is through the Kazanga Channel, which drains into Lake Edward. The water levels fluctuate very little throughout the year. It's peaceful and quiet. I go to the upper open air deck, sit down, and savor the moment. This is an extremely rare saddle-billed stork. It's a huge bird, five foot tall with a nine foot wingspan. It's usually found alone, roaming the shores, eating frogs and fish. They are silent and rarely make noise. Adult hippos cannot swim and are not buoyant. When in deep water, they sink to the bottom and usually propel themselves by pushing off from the bottom. Hippopotamuses are the third largest mammals in the world after whales and elephants with an average weight ranging between three to 4,000 pounds. Hippos leave the water at dusk to graze on grass, their main food source. They spend about five hours grazing and consume about 150 pounds of grass each night. At first, I thought this was an American bald eagle, but then I remembered I was in Africa and was told it was an African fish eagle. Lake Edward and Lake George are located within the National Park and have few human settlements along its shores. The few fishing villages allowed existed long before the creation of the National Park and were allowed to continue their traditional way of life. The largest human settlement, Moea, is on the Ugandan side of Lake Edward and serves mainly as a ranger station and tourist facility. The tour, officially called the Kazinga Tripper Boat Tour, lasts about two hours and is Queen Elizabeth National Park's most popular tourist attraction. We leave Moea, Lake Edward, and the Kazinga Channel. But instead of getting on the dirt road, Duwata takes a dirt road in the park and drives across the Katway Kikorungu volcano fields the Roar and Zori Mountains clearly visible on the horizon. The meter high grass is like an ocean and as Duwata reminds me, a perfect hiding place for lions hunting their next meal. We come to a steep and rocky ridge and drive slowly and cautiously across the rocks and ruts. Duwata slows down and we crest the top of a ridge and a caldera, which is an extinct volcano crater, oh, yeah. comes into view. This caldera is one of many that make up the crater lakes in Queen Elizabeth National Park. We continue driving up the ridge with Lake Edward and the Cassini Plains visible below. Duwata stops the truck and I get on the roof. It is awe-inspiring and humbling to see such a big sky and open country. This is definitely a vista I will never forget.
Duauda puts a truck in gear and drives on, telling me to tie down my gear and hold on tight to the luggage rack on the roof as the road gets even steeper and rougher ahead. We crest another ridge, this one the highest around, and come to the biggest, widest, deepest, and most splendid caldera in the park, the Katwi Kikurungu Caldera. This caldera formed 5,000 years ago when the earth surrounding the volcano collapsed into the empty magma chamber. The caldera is one mile deep and three miles across. We turn back and drive down towards the plains, dusk fast approaching, when we come across some lone antelopes. Dusk is a time when animals come out of their burrows and forage for food. It's also the time predators and carnivores hunt. This is the Katwi Kukurungu Mar. A mar is a low relief volcanic crater that is formed when groundwater comes into contact with hot lava, causing a frito magmatic or steam explosion. The lake is sulfurous, smelly, and sometimes dangerous to human health. So can you believe that we have been on the other side of the, the hill? From this vantage point, we see the opposite end of the Kitwi Kukurungu caldera. We have less than 30 minutes of daylight left, and we are not allowed in the park at night. Luckily, we make it back to Queen Anne's Pavilion before nightfall. We leave the park and drive back to Simba Safari Camp, where dinner, and more importantly, beer awaits. We make it back to camp and head to the restaurant just as it starts to rain. I don't see the others, so I sit down at a table by myself, order a beer, and give the menu a look. Hmm, I think I'll get the fish stew.